What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and if you're in a market for a new gaming system, chances are you might have looked at some SSDs to run as your gaming drives. And if you've had a look at those SSDs, chances are you've seen the massive slew of Samsung SSDs you could pick up and probably thought to yourself, well, is there really much of a difference and which one should you pick up? With Samsung offering a million different options from 2.5 inch drives, M.2, NVMe, it can get quite confusing. So today we're gonna to find out which is the better options for using as a gaming drive. Now in today's test, we'll be going ahead and taking mainly a look at 500 gigabyte drives as they do strike a good balance between not exactly costing a whole ton of money, although they're still pretty expensive, but also too, they do still offer a fair bit of space as a lot of games these days are getting massive in the file sizes that they do have. Now most of us here today are still using mechanical drives. I know for a fact I have a ton of mechanical drives for my games and there's still a lot of us out there as they do deliver better gigabyte to dollar performance or rather value and overall a lot of us still just like the value and storage we get out of our mechanical hard drives. Don't get me wrong, SSDs are great but for a lot of us they may not be the best thing out there. But with that being said, let's take a look at some of the drives that we did go ahead and test for our video here today. And we picked up both two and a half inch and also to the M.2 film factor, but firstly two and a half inch drives. So we picked up the 850 Pro and also to the new 860 Pro, both in the 500 gigabyte rough size. Now I picked these guys up as the Pros rather than the Evos, mainly because they do generally offer a little bit better speed, they're a little bit better built, and they do again offer just that little bit more than the standard Evo drives. If you want to know more about the difference between Pro and then Evo drives, do let me know down in that comment section and I'll put that on a list of videos to do. But there is a slight difference between the two, so for today's testing, we're mainly looking at the Pro drives versus just the Evo ones. But in terms of difference, Yes, there is a slight difference, but when it comes to actual real-world tests, well, you'll find out there isn't exactly too much between Pro and Evo. But for today, 860 and also to 850 Pro in the 2.5 inch form factor. And just taking a look at those guys, they are actually relatively expensive. Sure, 500 gig drives have definitely come down in price, but honestly, that price tag of around $300, pretty expensive there. Then moving on, we have our M.2 option right here with the more budget-friendly Samsung 860 Evo and also to the flagship 960 Pro. Now I did mention we weren't really testing Evo drives, but I couldn't exactly find an M SATA type of drive or rather a SATA based M.2 drive that wasn't the 860 Evo. So I kind of had to run with it. But either way, we are running that and also to once again the flagship beast of a drive 960 Pro NVMe PCIe M.2 drive, which is just a really nice looking drive. Kind of wish I could have kept it after this test uh, because it was a really fun thing to have in the system. Once again, all the drives that we did test here today were all around the 500 gigabyte drive space. They had all been recently formatted, they'd been trimmed, everything was running great. They're basically brand new at that point. And we did run it with our GTX 1080 Ti. 7700K test bench for our gaming numbers. Let's take a look at the actual gaming numbers. First and foremost, we do have gaming FPS, and let's face it, drives don't exactly affect any FPS, and if you're wondering why we still actually show FPS in games with these drives, it's because at some point someone's gonna ask, well, why didn't I show the FPS in game? because it doesn't really matter. We can see whether we're running the 960 Pro or our little basic hard drive, there is really no difference. So for those few people who really wanted to know whether it make a difference, no, in terms of actual FPS, it doesn't make a difference. But where it does make a difference is in things like loading time and also to cutscenes and also to can indeed help in large open world games. For example, GTA 5 felt just that little bit more snappy when loading up cutscenes and also to loading up new terrain and locations, thanks to the fact that the 960 Pro was much faster. But it was one of those things that just felt nice in game but wasn't necessarily measurable because it's sort of not really repeatable. It's just when you start playing around in those games is when you start to feel ever so slightly more snappy. Though with that being said, for a lot of people, I can almost guarantee there's really not gonna be a make it or break it deal. Where we do get to measure some things is in the load time of these applications from when you click launch to when you can actually start playing the game. And taking a look at these numbers, 
damn those SSDs do make quite a difference. And even for example take a look at GTA 5, even not on the fastest SSD we had available, just your standard SSDs out there, they were still able to achieve almost 50% faster load times than what our mechanical hard drive baseline can achieve, and damn those are really nice numbers. Now just for reference, the previous videos in these Gaming On series, I was waiting up to 5 minutes for GTA 5 to load, so having it load up in a matter of seconds was absolutely crazy, I really did enjoy that there. And if we take a look at the super high end 960 Pro, that thing was walking all over game load times. Sure, not all games were able to be halved just like GTA 5 was, but there was still a noticeable improvement across the entire board when we were moving over to the SSDs. However, the interesting thing to note is once we did switch over to the SSDs, sure there was a decrease in actual load time, but the SSDs themselves, that few seconds between them all really doesn't translate to a whole lot in the real world. Honestly, if I didn't have my stopwatch running and I wasn't exactly timing and figuring out which drive I had in my system, any SSD would have been so much better than the mechanical drive that we were running before. So okay then, so looking at those numbers purely, it should look like we should just run out and buy 960 Pros for our gaming, right? Well, yes, that may be the case if you're purely after speed. For a lot of us though, we do go ahead and actually have to make a bit of a compromise when it comes to our gaming systems, because unfortunately, not all of us have an unlimited budget to just throw away on high-end expensive drives, and we do have to find a good balance between the dollars that we're spending on our drives and how much space that we do have or your gigabyte per dollar rating. And if we flick up this graph right here, we see sure the uh, actual two and a half inch drives weren't exactly the fastest in our game tests, but when we do look at their price to performance, they actually do offer a lot more storage for the amount that you are paying. And sure, you may not get the exact 50% reduction like we did on some of the NVMe drives or rather the NVMe drive that we did test here today, we were still seeing much better performance and and from our price to value kind of standpoint, it was much better. And honestly, I'm not sure about you, but for me, I'm not really interested in dropping $450 for a 500 gig drive to store a couple games and then have it completely filled up. Which means, sure, those faster drives are really nice, but at the end of the day, some of the more slower SSDs, or slower SSDs, they're still fast at the end of the day, uh, may be a better value. So for me, when it comes to looking at these drives, I really do want to find the balance between price and also to how much storage you're getting. And with new games taking up more and more space, a 500 gig drive whilst large may not be able to hold all the games in the future. And with a lot of places out there having poor internet speeds, re-downloading game files may not necessarily be an option for all of us, so having a large capacity drive may be something that we all do need in a system, and a super fast and not so big SSD may not be the very best option. For me personally, I'd be looking at more of the 850 series in the 2.5 inch form factor, as they deliver the best gigabyte per dollar rating, and they come in around $220 for that 500 gig drive, which gives us a lot of storage without really blowing our money too much on the 400 plus dollar drive, which is what the NVMe drive is offering. Sure, with that being said, the NVMe drive is absolutely nice, and I would love to have that in my system any day, though the price to value isn't as great as some of the other options, but the performance is definitely still there. Though that being said, unless you're dropping big dollars on your next gaming system, running your standard hard drive isn't exactly too bad, and still with that being said, looking at our baseline numbers, they're still pretty respectable compared to the SSD options. But if you want the fastest of the fastest, the SSDs are definitely a pretty good good option. But let me know down in that comment section, what do you run to play your games? Do you have a small SSD that you just copy some games to and basically use a normal hard drive? Or are you all SSD or all hard drive? Again, let me know down below. If you want to pick up some of these Samsung SSDs that we did mention today, I've also too left them down in that description box as well as the hard drive that we did compare today. Otherwise, once again, thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.